Hello and welcome. My name is Colin Espinalis and I'm a senior customer success manager at LinkedIn and the North America co-lead of LinkedIn's Hispanic Latinx employee resource group, Ola. Ola's mission is to unite LinkedIn's Latinx employees, allies, and diverse communities to increase access to opportunity. It's also Hispanic Heritage Month, happy Hispanic Heritage Month, which is a time for us to give national focus on the United States Hispanic community, particularly in a year where this community is being disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 and diversity and inclusion conversations are at the forefront. It is important for us to use this moment to bring attention to the needs and opportunities to support the advancement of this fundamental American community. This year, Ola is living our mission through our theme, Nuestra Historia, our story. With a collection of events throughout the month, we will be talking with external speakers about our experiences, highlighting our Hispanic and Latinx colleagues, and sharing the beautiful history of our unique stories. We are incredibly excited today to live our theme in partnership with We Are All Human. We Are All Human is a foundation dedicated to advancing the agenda, the agenda of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Made up of an experienced group of marketers and sustainable activists with backgrounds from the United Nations, global affairs, media, and the corporate world, We Are All Human is committed to making change through collective action. Today, I'm so excited to have with me Gabby Natali, Damian Rivera, and Marissa Solis as we discuss the state of Latinos in the American culture and societal landscape. Gabby is a three-time Demi, a Daytime Emmy Award winner, Harper Collins bestselling author and, and, and speaker, founder of Welcome All Beauty, and president of Aganar Media. Damien is the CEO of Alpha, the Association of Latino Professionals in America, the first national Latino professional association in the United States. Their mission is to empower and develop Latino men and women as leaders of character for this nation in every sector of the global economy. Marissa is the Senior Vice President of Core Brands, Partnerships and Media at Frito-Lay, where she is responsible for building iconic advertising and key business strategies for Doritos, Cheetos, and Tostitos brands. Gabby, Damien, Marissa, thank you so much. Hello. Hi. How are we Thanks today? Us. Great. You. Good. Outstanding. Good. I love hearing it. I, I know we have 45 minutes. I'm so excited that you all are here today. So let's, I, I run and jump in uh, and, and learn a little bit about all of you particularly. Um, I, I would love to hear from each of you a moment in your career where you had to make a decision that you knew was gonna have a, a career defining moment. Um, and, and particularly, it was interesting, I was, I was obviously doing some research and all you learning, and you all talk so much about your own experiences, specifically as a Latino and a Latina. I would love to hear how that plays into that decision as well. Uh, Marissa, would you mind kicking us off? Absolutely, and you know, first of all, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, uh, Buenas tardes, and thank you so much to LinkedIn and to We Are All Human for having me here. Um, and you know, to answer your question, there's there's been many moments in my career, but one in particular that I want to share, which was truly defining for me, not only for my career, but me personally as a business leader. Um, about three years ago, I was approached by my leadership at PepsiCo um, to start a Hispanic business unit. Um, it was a new opportunity, had never existed before and something they wanted to explore. Um, and I turned it down. I, I didn't want to do the role. And the reason I didn't want to do the job was because at the time I wanted to be seen as a great business leader, period, end of story. I didn't want Hispanic to be attached to that for, for some reason, I, I didn't want, um, you know, to be pegged. Um, but uh, my, my leadership, you know, was very persist persistent. And one of my greatest mentors told me that this, this would be um, defining for me and that I needed to, you know, take it on. And, and I have to say it was probably, it, it was the best, most proudest uh, role in my career. I did help to build a Hispanic business unit at PepsiCo. Um, which now is, you know, strong across PepsiCo, not only in beverages, but uh, but in in our food organization. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot, A, about the Hispanic community, the 60 million strong and the business case behind how important it is for business. 
But more importantly, I learned about myself and the power of being a Latina. Like it is a unique thing and a, and a powerful thing um, that builds companies that can really build the business. Um, and so I'm now very proud to say I'm a great Latina business leader um, because of that role. So it, it was definitely career defining. I've now been promoted and you know are moving on in the organization. Um, but if it wasn't for that role, I wouldn't have found out really the true magic within myself that can really help the company and others grow, if that makes sense. It does. It does. Marissa. I love that. It's so interesting. I find sometimes we need that, like that you don't, you don't always associate business helping you discover that. And it's so funny that that really helped can push that journey, help an individual learn about themselves as well as how to use that in, in the workforce. I, I love that. Definitely. Damien, I wouldn't mind uh, asking you the same question. Yeah, no. So again, I appreciate you having us here. And I love what Marissa was talking about there. Right? When I think about this defining moments, I think there's three types of them. Uh, there are micro moments that lead up to the bigger moment that's there. And oftentimes we uh, may not really understand how those micro moments translate over to the impact and what we could do for the bigger moment. Then there's also the personal things that are happening outside of work that we bring with us that can uh, put us in a position where we have that defining moment that may impact what we are doing from a world. So it impacts the community perspective. I think right now, a lot of people are going through that personal defining moments that are playing into how they are thinking about what is my purpose at work. Uh, for me, I'll give you an example of a micro moment that translated over to the, all the pieces. Um, I remember one time I was uh, working on a project and um, the lead partner for the engagement had asked me when I would be done with the specific work. I said that evening I would have him something. He said, you know what? Don't worry if it's going too late. Don't worry about it. It's fine in the morning. And I worked till probably about one, two in the morning, sent the information over. And I started the drive that was about a two hour drive from Allentown, Pennsylvania to New York where I was living. And as I was driving, Driving, uh, the partner gave me a call and his first thing was, what are you doing? And I said, well, I, I told you I would get you this tonight. And so what I did was get you this tonight. And he said, you should not have done that. Right. And um, he talked with me for the next two hours. What I didn't realize was he was making sure and it was on speakerphone. So it was all good while I was driving. He was making sure I got home. Okay. He knew what that road looked like and he knew it was very dark, it was no lights, and he wanted to make sure I was okay. That was a micro moment that translated to a level of respect, trust with that specific partner who then gave me the biggest opportunity of my career 10 years later to step into a defining role where I had a choice. I could either go into a project where um, if it didn't work out, I would be the guy that was resulting in uh, the company being kicked out of this work we were doing for another company. Uh, but if everything worked out okay, I would have this tremendous upside. Or the alternative was uh, staying on a project that I was doing that was about 15 minutes from home. He gave me the opportunity of a lifetime, which translated to me being able to uh, perform this role and uh, get to that partner level myself uh, based on the work performed in that role. So uh, one piece of advice I have for people is just making sure you understand how the micro moments over time add up to giving you the opportunity to have that big defining moment uh, you know, over time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gabby, same question. Can I ask you? <laughs> yes, of course. Well, thank you, LinkedIn. Thank you. We're all human and happy to share with my fellow panelists and with you, Colin. But I have a very, very uh, defining moment in my career. It was the year 2007. Uh, I was working as a news anchor to, for one of the two most important networks in my market. And I had a very clear feeling that if I continued uh, in this path uh, and I continued to grow in media um, as a Latina on camera, at least in that year, in the year 2007, 
I only had two stereotypes that I could fit into. One was going to be the, the stereotype of the sexy Latina reporter who is usually uh, put in a box and is only allowed to do entertainment or weather and is never uh, allowed to um, to swim in, the, she's, she's only confined to shallow waters. And then the other one was that I would only be able to do news and I, I would not be able to show uh, my personality or the aspects of my personality that I like the most. I, I realized that if I had to fit in one of these two stereotypes, somehow I had to erase the parts uh, of myself, of me, that actually make who I am, they make me. And I realized that I don't want to be a wannabe. I want to be me. And so I took a difficult decision because it's very hard to quit a, a job that everybody wants as new Sankor. And I started creating content independently. And I credit that decision, that moment of clarity and of going pioneering in a way and, and trying to embrace creating and embodying the type of Latinas that I like to see in the world with everything that happened next, with being able uh, to create my own show, to uh, syndicate it nationally, to win our awards, our Emmy Awards, and, and, and to be able to become a published author. Uh, so that, I think, is one of the things that it's a collective work that we are doing, but I am convinced that every time we take that step and we, every time we pioneer, we move the world forward, not just for ourselves, but for everybody like ourselves that can see their own journey in, 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 our, in our own. Yeah, Abby, so beautifully said. I'm gonna try not to just like reiterate how much I love hearing you all speak after every time you all talk. <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm probably gonna do it a lot uh, today. But one thing I think was so interesting, like we, we, you all kind of spoke about that moment of just like needing to understand yourself, right? Needing to really take a time to say, where do I want to see myself? What is the future for me? And how do I own that? I think that is such, such an important thing that a lot of us really struggle with a lot of times is really understanding how do I own that? How do I take that moment? So again, thank you all so much for being able to share those moments for yourselves. Um, I'd love to kind of pivot and talk a little bit about uh, the, the why this is important, right? I, I think we've all understood where we've gone in the, specifically you all have gone in your careers and, and why it's important, your background, your, your, what you bring to the table because of that. Um, but I would love to, uh, to understand why do you all think diverse employer bases um, for companies as a, as a part of their strategy and, and, and helping get their results is so important. Um, Damien, as, as someone who is working to empower and develop Latinx talent in all sectors, uh, I wouldn't mind if you kicked us off. There. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think it, it is critical that we understand the power that each of us has based on our journeys in life, right? Uh, and so when you talk about the power of diversity in translating over to business impact, one of the things I like to do is help people understand how does that actually happen, right? So you say, um, typically people talk about diversity translates over to innovation, innovation translates to business results, but there's not necessarily a clear view of why that actually happens. Uh, and, and I love talking about why I believe the why happens, which is um, if you if you follow me along for a second, consider this, right? All of us, you know what you know, right? You know the things that you know. You know a fraction of what you don't know. And the example there is if you had to build a rocket ship today, you'd probably know I need to get a mechanical engineer, maybe an aerospace, uh, need to get some folks that know fluid dynamics, some physics folks. You know the people you need to pull in to be able to figure out the places that you don't know. And then there's a whole world of stuff out there that you don't even know you don't know. Where diversity comes into play is when you pull more people in, those unknown unknowns start to shrink. When unknown unknowns shrink, your level of risk actually goes down because now you can actually address those issues. So from a business standpoint, businesses typically are looking to be able to reduce their risk while increasing their return diversity translates over to you to be able to reduce your risk, increase your return, and have better ideas because you have different pieces coming into play. And it's critically important that people feel psychological safety when they are in a diverse group so that they can actually bring the best of themselves every single day. 
And my belief is that the Latino community, uh, I oftentimes say equity of opportunity is not the same as equity responsibility. With increased ability comes increased responsibility. And the Latino community has insane abilities. And so we have a responsibility to make sure that we are continuing to help companies grow. And companies have a responsibility to make sure that they are including us in those conversations. Mm. Love it. Yeah, try try not to just geek out on that answer again, but uh, great, <laughs> that's great. And and honestly, I I so I I one of my roles I work uh, I, I advise talent acquisitions, and I love uh, analogies, and so I may be stealing that uh, rocket ship analogy. Please do. That's Please one I do. haven't used yet, but I, I I use a dance party one that's a little similar, <laughs> but I, I think this one's a little more uh, professional than the dance party one I've been, <laughs> been throwing out at people. Uh, Marissa, I, I would love to to hear your thoughts on that as well. Yeah. I Looks like she might have frozen. Yeah. First. Oh, I'm going to turn it over to Gabby real quick. Gabby, if you wouldn't mind, we're going to get her. Not back a problem. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, so I think we're talking about the whys. And I think one of the things that we, that we cannot stress enough, it's uh, how important it is um, to, be, to be aware uh, of the fact that sometimes, and that's the whole point of what we're talking about with the why, why we need a diverse workforce, is because the world changed and it looks in a certain way and your workforce uh, is either delayed or is uh, in, in reflecting that change or is not reflecting it because there's some kind of resistance. And in that gap that we have between how the world looks and how your workforce looks, there's uh, a space, which I call uh, the space of opportunities that are lost. These are the products that your company will never ambition. These are the startups that will not get funded. These are the talents that will not get fairly or fast enough uh, promoted. So I think, um, and, and when you navigate different industries, and I can mostly speak for uh, media and marketing, uh, but really there's a lot of work that we have ahead um, you know, I am a recent, um, and I'm a recent author. I've been published uh, two years ago uh, with my first book, and my next one is coming in English um, in January. And I am discovering and researching uh, how much work needs to be done, for example, in the publishing industry, where 85% of the editorial uh, positions are still um, not diverse. Uh, so. As a Latina, that is maybe the first ones to be signed for that division. I find myself, you know, um, in spaces where I have to uh, talk to marketing teams, where I explain to them when his party heritage is, or what is the importance of having my own book narrated by myself, because it's a leadership book that needs to be narrated by the author, even though it has an accent, because we need. Uh, to represent and we need to have um, this type of visibility in all kinds of, uh, of media, uh, whether it is a leadership uh, book or whether it is a TV series on streaming, whether it is a movie that is nominated for an Oscar, in front of the camera and behind of the camera, when you don't have uh, that diversity, when you don't have that visibility, it shows. And this space that we're talking about between how the world looks like and how your workforce looks like, it becomes a bigger space of opportunity that are actually being lost. Thank you, Gabby. It's so funny when you mentioned when you mentioned a book coming out. I, I thought to myself, I hope it's on audiobook, and I hope she narrates it. So I'm glad that you said mm -hmm. that because I I, I, I fought for it. Good. I fought for it. Yes. Good. Great. That that I, that was the first thing I thought of. I was like, oh, I I'm going to get it. I'm gonna get it on <laughs> audiobook because that's how I, I do it at, at home now. Um, and I hope she narrates it. So I'm I'm looking forward to that in January. Thank you. Uh, Welcome back. <laughs> the rest of the world, that's what happens. <laughs> this, is, this is the world we're in now. Um, it felt like you were answering the question, so I wanted to come back to you and, and, and give you that opportunity. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more with, with what you've said. I mean, we have a responsibility and an obligation to reflect the communities that we serve. And only if we're, you know, inclusive, empathetic, if we truly bring in everybody's diversity of thought, um, 
then we can start creating, innovating, and really serving those communities. And you know, I was I was listening to Gabby's answer in terms of media. When you think about a company like PepsiCo, you know, when you're a consumer products company, it's so important that our internal company is a reflection of the consumers that consume our products, right? Whether we create the flavors that they're seeking, whether we communicate in the language that they speak or or just the culture that they're in, it's so, so important for our business. Um, and then for our talent, um, because what we've seen is, you know, when you start really retaining and promoting diverse talent and the top of your company starts to look very different, ideas are very different and you really start to break through and truly advance. And not only, you know, yes, you're going to sell and, and your ROI is gonna be wonderful, um, but that's not the important thing. You're going to be a better company, right? And a purposeful company. And I think that's what, you know, that's what we all strive to be. Definitely. Definitely. Gabby, Gabby, Marissa, you both hit on something which I thought was so interesting. It was about just how, how we were, we as a community is, is evolving. Things are changing. And it's so important to think about that. Uh, Gabby, I'd love to know your thoughts. You know, how do you think the community has really evolved in the last decade? And, and, what should key brand stakeholders be thinking about as they're engaging with the brand and, as, and in the future as well as we continue to evolve? I think one of the main things when you talk about, when you think about our community 10 years ago or how to talk to our community 10 years ago versus now, I think uh, marketers and people in media, they used to equate uh, Latinos with uh, only Spanish or with um, Spanish predominantly. And I think the way we are approaching Latinos now is culture first, not language first. And that is a big change in how Latinos are approached. It's not that uh, we are not creating content um, in Spanish or that there are not campaigns in Spanish, but the key is that we put culture first right now, while 10 years ago it was pu uh, putting language first. Uh, the second thing, I think it has to do with how we consume media. We know that we Latinos, some people like to admit it or not, we spend more time here. We spend more time uh, on digital. We are five times more likely to share the things that we love, uh, whether it's on, on streaming services or on social media. And I also would recommend any brand that is um, willing to reach out to Latinos uh, nowadays that they take into consideration uh, the context that we're living right now, not just for Latinos, but for every consumer. Consumer habits are changing. We are more open to try uh, new brands. Uh, it's a great opportunity for direct-to-consumer brands. Uh, the consumer side are changing so fast. I was surprised. My mother now has learned to do online banking. She uh, buys her groceries online as well. And then one last thing that I would uh, suggest or recommend for uh, brands trying to reach Latinos nowadays and in the digital space is that the open rate for automated emails has skyrocketed. And uh, while well, now so many businesses are getting ready for a season, a holiday season that for online marketers uh, many think that is going to be a record one uh, I would suggest that they uh, take take a look into automated emails thank you thank you for bringing that up too I think um, I, I love that 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 idea like it was leading with language and change and and speaking personally like I I, I was never taught Spanish and so it was a very mm -hmm. hard thing for me to be able to Hey, is this why you're looking at me? And unfortunately, I'm, I'm I'm a brick wall for you. This isn't this isn't the benefit. And I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of people who identify with the culture that that's not the thing we're leading mm -hmm. with. Well, and it, 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 and per, again, personally, it feels like there's a lot more inclusivity in communities and for companies and how we're bringing in, in talent like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for calling that out, um, Marissa. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well, um, as someone who's focused around around those aspects for for uh, what you're doing. Yeah, sure. And, you know, I'll, I'll offer um, another perspective too, because I agree with everything, Gabby, you said, and all of the trends, obviously, you know, we look into as, as we look to engage this community. But one of the things that I think is so important, you know, for the last decade, I mean, the numbers have been there, right? We've been growing, the business case in there is there in terms of the dollar impact that this community has. But I think in the last, and I would say probably couple of years, 
this community has really shifted to activism. Um, you know, we weren't that active before, and I feel that the community is now getting really united and making their voices heard and really act acting to shift the culture. Um, we're not reacting to the culture, we're creating the culture. You know, you see so many culture makers out there. Um, and I think that's a key piece for brands to understand. This isn't just, uh, you know, another segment that, that you have to, quote unquote, cater to. This is a powerful, you know, community um, that that moves things in a big way and creates movements. Um, and from a brand perspective, that's that's a powerful thing that we need to think about. Um, and you have to engage this community in an authentic way, because I think we'll smell it a mile away. Right. If, if you're inauthentic. Um, and that's that's truly important as well as you think about engaging uh, with your brands. Definitely. Definitely. Damien, I, I wouldn't mind asking you the same question, just knowing all, all the areas, too. I would love to hear your perspective. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they hit on it beautifully, frankly. And, and what I'll say is what I think is a big common thread there is uh, understanding the data behind the power of the community. And I think we've gotten better at understanding the power that we have and celebrating the differences within the Latino community, while at the same time uh, being more cohesive as a group uh, to be able to make change. And um, I think those are some of the big pieces and understanding the data and the power. I could tell you uh, from an alpha perspective, we get the biggest engagement when we put posts out there that reflect data and helping people understand the power that our community has. Uh, there was a recent report that was put out, the Latino GDP report, that people are reading and realizing just how phenomenal um, and the growth that we have as a community. And it hits on the exact points that have been said earlier. It's so it's so interesting, and I think it, especially again thinking about how how everything's evolving and communities has become such such an important part of the culture. I think, and and Gabby, you brought up a good point too. And, and the cult, the community doesn't need to be who's around you necessarily all the time now, right? We have our phones, we have groups on LinkedIn, we have ways of creating and finding those communities to come together um, and, and learn about each other. Uh, one of the communities I, I know uh, you all are a part of is is uh, the Hispanic Star. Um, and, and Gabby, would you mind sharing a little bit about Hispanic Star and just the involvement that, that you all are participating in? Absolutely. So uh, everybody, once you finish this, go to hispanicstar.org. Hispanic Star is a wonderful platform created by the organization We Are All Human. I became involved with the organization two years ago uh, when they invited me to their uh, Hispanic Leadership Summit in the United Nations to speak as a, a narrative rapporteur. And, and I fell in love with the mission. I fell in love with the people. And I fell in love with the passion of, of the founder, Claudia Romo, to unite all of us Latinos. And the beauty of the Hispanic uh, Star um, initiative is that we can all make it our own. It's like uh, I felt that we were all doing um, contributions and similar work. So, so Damian is doing it in uh, his organization, and Marisa is doing it in her organization, and Colin is doing it in, in his organization. And somehow, we now are all connected. And the beauty of it is that you can make it your own. You can, make, you can have a Hispanic star as your resource to uh, connect with other people. You can have it as an education platform to understand more about your culture, the contributions that we do to this nation, and share it with your own school, with your own university, with your church, with, with, um, with your partner, with your significant partner. Uh, and there you can also find who's offering help uh, now in the, during this uh, COVID-19 crisis that uh, you know our community has been uh, disproportionately affected, or how you can offer for help. So there are so many ways to contribute. There are so many ways and you choose your level of commitment and you choose how you want to do it. So that's why I am encouraging everybody to go visit us and to um, become an ambassador. Great. Thank you. I love it's It's just constant like, yep, that's, <laughs> that's, uh -huh. that's what we need to be doing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love that. I think it's so, so great. Again, just like even my, my personal journey and just how I have felt like, uh, included honestly mm -hmm. is, is, is so important to aspects and organizations like that and communities like that um 
Another thing I, you know, in, in my time, and, and as I, I mentioned earlier, I, I, I co-lead our North America uh, ERG for, for Hispanics and Latinx uh, employees at LinkedIn. In, in conversations with other employee resource groups and just conversations, you know, reading, there's such a, an interesting topic about that, that, that term, right? Like Latinx, Hispanic, whatever it might be that, that kind of lumps together. Uh, and, but also, how do, how do you think about that? How do you approach that when, when no one would say my heritage is Hispanic? Or Latinx. So um, I, I would love to and to know, and, and Damien, I want to ask you specifically again, just knowing all the sectors, um, or start with you at least. Um, what do you think? Are Hispanics all one marketplace or, or many? And and if they are one, great. If they're many, great. But what should the strategy be to, to reaching out to those communities? And yeah. Like, and so, so I think it's a phenomenal question, right? And, and what I tell people all the time is, you know, um, the Latin, we are diversity within diversity. Uh, right. And uh, it goes to what I see as one of the most impactful and powerful things about our community that I'm seeing today is um, I'll tell you, when I was younger, uh, you know, there were some divisions where if you were maybe uh, if you were Mexican, you didn't like someone who's Puerto Rican or Dominican or Cuban or and, and there was this thing that was there growing up. And what I'm seeing now is an appreciation for the differences within our community while an embracing of those differences, right? So for example, you don't hear people saying, I'm eating Hispanic food. You may hear Mexican food, Salvadorian food, Puerto Rican food, or, you know, from Chile. And so there's, there's, cause there's so many, so many unique differences, right? That make it so beautiful, frankly. And so the culture is similar and there's a lot of goodness that's there, but it's those differences also that make us so powerful in what we can do to move things forward. So, you know, your direct question, are we a monolith? Absolutely not. Do we have power when we come together and we understand each other enough to be able to make an impact with each other? We absolutely do. Thank you. Sorry, listen off food. I just discovered this Ecuadorian restaurant right down the street from me. And now I'm like, it's lunchtime in Chicago and I might wait a little bit for them to deliver food. <laughs> that might be my lunch now. So you got me thinking food. Um, yeah. I'm not going to pivot this conversation to talking. I mean, we could, I guess. But. <laughs> uh, Marissa, I, I'm curious, what are your thoughts there specifically in the in that strategy of reaching out, just knowing your background and how that was such an important part as you developed that new? Uh, yeah, new it's, a, it's a great question. And here's here's what I'll tell you, because I, I, I agree with with Damien in that we are we are absolutely diverse um, and there's so much beauty to that diversity, but we're also 60 million strong. And so as we think about the messages to the community, I think there are very important messages that have to be addressed to the entire community, right? And that's part of what Gabby was talking about in terms of the Hispanic star. That's why I love the Hispanic star because it elevates the entire community and it talks about the power of the 60 million strong and what we can do um, you know, to make an impact. So that's one way to address the community. But again, we are very diverse. Um, there's diversity within diversity. And so when you think about brands, right? Um, we definitely take a look at the community and segment that community, right? Because within that community, there's ethnicities, and if, you know, we're from different countries, there's age groups, there's philosophies. I mean, there's so many things. So as a marketer, you know, we try to marry the role and the narrative that our brands have with the target that we're trying to reach. And, you know, a brand like Doritos, you know, it, it is a Gen Z driven brand. Um, and so we look at Latino youth and that is our target. And we try to figure out the mindset of Latino youth which is all about right now self-expression. You know, self-expression is so important um, and that's where we focus, right? But if it is, you know, our PepsiCo promise to retrain, retain, recruit, you know, advance Latinos, that's going to be a broad message to the 60 million that are out there because we care about all Latinos, right? So it's a bit of a nuance. Um, and, and, and again, I want to embrace and love our diversity but I feel the power of our strength in the in that 60 million number. So how we leverage both, I think is gonna be really key as, as we move forward. Yeah, and the beauty is it's not exclusive, right? I can I can identify and 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 talk with everyone, but I can also have my 
my Ecuadorian background, right? And my Ecuadorian lunch that I'm going to have later. Uh, <laughs> Gabby, as someone who's put out so much media and, and that's that's the audience, right? Not that that's the only audience you're going for, but that that's a key a key demographic. How have you how have you navigated that? I think um, I, I agree with uh, Damon and with Marisa. It's it's one, but it's also very diverse. Uh, sometimes I think about it. I don't know. It's the first image that comes to my mind, uh, like a Russian doll. You know, it's it's one, but it has so many inside of them, and there are so many layers. You can think about it in terms of generation. You can think about it in terms of language. You can think about it in terms of heritage. You can think about it uh, in terms of um, many things. But at the same time, even when you peel all those layers and you put the little one with the big one, you can still identify they are part of the same thing mm -hmm. and that's what i believe uh it's it's in a way our our community you know we're different each each one of these dolls could be painted differently but we are part of the same and then when it comes to strategies i'm gonna say something that is going to sound so basic so elemental that you're gonna say gabby come on uh, but I have to say it. I think before we think about uh, sophisticated strategies uh, to uh, reach out to Latinos, uh, before we design a plan, before we do everything, I think it's so important for any organization or any brand to think about our community uh, and to put effort money, time, and, and, and brain to whatever you're creating. Because it breaks my heart when I see initiatives for mainstream uh, markets done with a certain level of excellence, and then you see the same brand or the same organization creating something that does not have the same level of excellence and love for our community. I feel that uh, we all realize that it's not done with love or with respect. And on the other side, when a company is doing it with love, with so much love, uh, it really reaches our hearts. For example, I was crying and so did all my friends. They were crying at the Super Bowl with Shakira and Shaylo. Uh, so that was a moment that, you know, uh, we will never remember, we, 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 I'm sorry, we will never forget because this was a memorable moment for all of us. And, and it showed the love, the attention to detail. And while this was seen all around the world, we felt it was for us as well. You were crying, I was dancing. I was, <laughs> dancing. I was crying and dancing. Yeah. Crying and dancing, that's it. <laughs> My kids were like, what is dad doing? Why is he emotional and dancing this much? Um, I love that. Uh, Gabby, you mentioned it. No, I think this is so key too, just that like, that, that, that piece of investing, right? The people need to be there. Like you, you see those companies that have done it wrong and sometimes, mm -hmm. and you know, again, you go like, who was in the room when they decided that? How did they, how did you get to that point? Yeah. Uh, Colombia is not Colombia. I mean, there's things that are so simple <laughs> that big brands get it wrong. Right. Right. And, and again, like I, I love each of you have such unique perspectives and how you got where you are and you're influencing this. So, so again, like personally, thank you all for influencing this, saying these things. It, it means so much and it helps us feel like it helps everyone. The, the, with 60 million, right? 60 million strong. Like we mm -hmm. feel like for those who are, are just getting in, started in their careers or they're looking for those next things, I would love to know each of you all just a, a piece of advice that you have uh, to that Latino, Latina who's watching that, that can really help them feel like they, they can be doing this as well. And, and, I'll, and I'll start Gabby. I, I see you ready. She got the hand up. I'm going to go with Gabby first. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think uh, the piece of advice that I would tell somebody is do not ever allow anyone to put you in a box. You know, do not believe other people's low expectations. Uh, if some if if there's a stereotype think about actually what is a stereotype a stereotype is n is not a fact it's just an opinion it's an opinion of somebody else about you or people like you but if you believe those low expectations if you take that opinion as a fact it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy so never allow anyone to put you in a box i love that yeah I'm glad I, I, you said it with me, so I'm going to go with you, Marissa, too. <laughs> I'm going to ask you next, but I'm glad we're all geeking out on each other. This is great. <laughs> I, I have three quick things, and, and the first is a lot to what Gabby is saying. Um, each of you has a unique, magical power, um, and I would say find it, 
develop it and make it shine and make sure that you're playing in the game. Um, don't be on the sidelines, be in the game. Um, second thing is leverage the power of your network. Um, you know, I've known Gabby for a long time. We've worked together. I, I can't wait to get to know you, Colin, and you, Damien, more because we can do a lot of things together. So leverage that. And the last thing I would say, which I think is the most important of all, is be kind. Um, give back. Be, be kind to others, no matter what they're to you, right? I think us, we, we have this humility and we have as Latinos just this ability to be kind and we need to we need more of that in the world yes uh, <laughs> so 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 true um especially especially right now it's so true thank you thank you so much for that yeah Amy. That, that so so hard to follow those two right so um i mean what i like to tell folks especially early on, early on in their careers remember your name Right. Remember where you come from. Remember your journey. Remember all the things that put you in a position to be able to contribute what you can do and translate that over to three things. Knowledge, network, action, taking action to create impact. Understand that you have to Marissa's point, have insane abilities. And allow that to be able to power you forward, right? Leverage your network to then take action. Any of those three things, if you don't do the third, you, you fall apart. You could, have a, you could have the knowledge, you could build up your network. If you are not taking action, you are not gonna achieve your aspirations. Right, so you need all three of those pieces. Make sure you are doing that. And very tactically, I would encourage every single person watching, if you have not done it, create your, your uh, journey line. Your journey line is literally your level of happiness over time and draw that out. And it could be your personal items in there, it could be your professional items in there, and what you will see is through that journey that you have taken, the highs and lows is where you will translate over the values that have been instilled in you through your generations before you that are now in you. And you will see you've gotten through everything. And you will see that low points have propelled you to the high points, and it'll put you in a position to be able to say, I can get through anything that's out there as long as I never give up. And so that is my advice to everyone out there. Knowledge, network, action, achieve your aspirations, and continue to give back to those that are coming after you. Because as if you think of yourself as being new, junior, whatever, there are still people watching you right now, and you are their heroes. So make sure you are continuing to give back as well. I've done a pretty decent job of making sure when I'm not on camera to try to take notes and take them really quietly. I'm going to have to find a recording of this. You all have been so, this has been such an inspiring conversation. This is uh, in a year of just punches to the gut. <laughs> this has definitely just been one of the most rewarding uh, things I've, I've been a part of. So I, I want to thank you all so, so much for being here today. Um, I, yeah, I, I like I'm, I'm speechless from you all. Like, thank you all so much. Um, and and any yeah, it, the, I think the last thing I'm just gonna say, I'm just curious. I'm gonna throw out one quick question. Fire round. Anything you're excited about for the rest of Hispanic Heritage Month? Anything you're really looking forward to doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay i'm gonna be quick i think uh the and that's why i jumped to the question because the we are just uh days away from a historic election uh, as marisa said we are 60 million strong but we need to make our voices count uh, counted and to make our voices heard there's nothing more important right here right now than to register to vote if you have not and to go vote take people with you and if you want to uh, be an activist or learn more about it uh, voto latino has their power uh, their power summit online and free so go to votolatino.org and that's why I was so excited <laughs> because I want everybody to go vote. Definitely, definitely. Yes, couldn't agree with you more in terms of voting. Um, you know, I'm very excited to see how we close out Hispanic Star because it's going to be uh, amazing and again, it's a collection of so many companies, so many organizations, so many communities lifting up the, the Hispanic community. So I'm excited about that. And just one thing I'm really excited about, which I can't share a lot of, but I'm just giving a hint. Um, 
PepsiCo will be making a major statement on a commitment um, to the Latino community, very similar to what we've done with the black community um, that I, I can't wait. Um, obviously can't, can't mention it until uh, the end of Hispanic Heritage Month, but very, very excited to share it with the world. When it comes. This year? Yeah, at the end of Hispanic oh. Heritage Month, October 15th. Yeah. All, all three of us went. <laughs> really, we got to <laughs> I know we're at time. Do you have any anything to yeah, add? So the, two things, right? So from I'll say from an alpha perspective, I love we have our most powerful Latinas event, which is on October eighth, where it highlights uh, Latinos, uh, Latinas specifically um, that are doing amazing things in a lot of different areas. Um, I will also reiterate what you've heard a few times. I'm going to say it one more time. Um, check out Hispanic Star so you can that that knowledge piece. Right, you're gonna build up your knowledge just by going there. And so this isn't necessarily an event, but it's the, what I love about Hispanic Heritage Month is people learning more about what's happening out there, the impact being made. Um, check out the Latino GDP reports. Uh, I think that's critical that we understand the data behind that's out there. Um, and like I said, continue to grow your network. So that's what I love about what's going on. Uh, it's not necessarily a specific event, but it's just the knowledge and the connecting that's happening. Perfect. Well, thank you all so thank much. Uh, on behalf of LinkedIn and We Are All Human, I, I want to thank Gabby, Damien, and Marissa for joining me in today's conversation. Um, as you could tell by my my speechlessness, I, I, this was incredibly inspiring for me. Thank uh, you. Thank everything you so going much. on. Yeah. Thank you all. Same here. So much. Yeah. Um, with everything going on in the world today, I think it, it really, again, I just want to reiterate, reiterate, it is so important that we come together as a community to really understand the role that we are playing in society and the economy. Let's continue to support each other and let's continue to lift each other up. I'll, I'll steal Marissa's words. Let's be kind to one another. Um, and, and as all of them mentioned, um, you know, all, all the panelists today were involved or are involved in the Hispanic Star. Um, the Hispanic Star represents an unparalleled collective effort to create a platform to showcase and amplify the contributions of the Hispanic community to the United States, not only as an integral part of the American culture, but also as an undeniable force shaping its future. You can find out more ways to get involved, future events, as well as even a Hispanic Heritage Month toolkit at hispanicstar.org. Again, I want to thank you all so much for attending. Stay safe. And as we said, don't forget to vote. Adios.